All right, welcome back all you beautiful bulletproof handyman and women to the bulletproof handyman business channel. So this is the handyman journal and today now I'm going to tell you what I did a couple days ago as well. I'll save that till the end. But today was a fascia job. So I figured what I do is see I'm not good at editing. I'm not going to take a whole lot of video and come home and stitch it all together with the background narration. Uh, I don't have time for it, mostly because I'm not good at it. If I was good at it, I'd probably be able to do it quickly and have the time, but I don't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through the fascia. I'm going to describe the steps involved in replacing the fascia because this is a relatively profitable, profitable job. And if nothing else, even if it's not crazy profitable, it's something that a lot of handymen won't do. You kind of need a carpenter for this usually. And most carpenters aren't going around doing small handyman type jobs because that's not where the money's at for them, or at least they don't think it is. So let me bring up the other screen and we'll open up this first one here. So first we just got pictures of the rotten fascia. As you can see, this one's pretty bad. This is another spot on the same house here. Now I also repaired this one. But all of my pictures and stuff are for the first one that you saw because I needed to actually get the job done. So I just did the one that was over on this side and made sure to document all of that real well. And then I went to the other one and just knocked it out. So it's just a few pictures. See, there's that's a really bad one there. All right. All right. All right. So the first trick is using the multi-tool. So when you do fascia removal, you've got nails coming in from the roof into the fascia from the top. And those nails, the only way to get them out, well, I guess there's a lot of ways, but for me, the only way to get them out is with my multi-tool going in from the top like that, just sort of like butter right down the side. Because the other option is you have to either pull up whatever roof is there and get under it and or the drip edge. And that's a lot of work. So as you can see on the video here, I'll let it play one more time. And as you can see, I'm just taking that in, running it along the top and cutting those off flush. Now this right here, it's kind of hard to tell maybe from the angle, but I used my multi-tool to make a rough cut at a 45 degree angle here. And I do mean rough. That is not the final cut, but that is the initial cut just to get the board out. And as you can see right here, I don't think I can zoom. Yeah, I can zoom in. There we go. So that's the final cut. That's the exact same cut that you were just looking at that was kind of rough. Here's the final form for that cut. All right. Next. There's another angle from it, as you can see. Now, this is a freehand 45. This is an exterior component. It's fascia. It's not the type of thing that's super crazy important. Like, this is not finished carpentry. This is exterior framing, essentially. So, although that is a very good cut, it is not perfect, but that's free-handed just with a multi-tool. This is going to be a video here. You can just see me cutting off some more of these nails that come out of the roof down into the fascia from the top. And we also do the same thing uh, from the side. You'll see it here in just a second. There's that beautiful crappy old van. Yeah, so the same thing right there from the rafters. You just get, them, get at them from the side. All right. Here's the next one. I decided to go ahead and do a vertical cut on this first just to get some material out of the way and then do the 45. That's just a bunch of boring video of that. And as you can see, it kind of helps if you can knock some chunks out while you're taking that 45 up. Another shot of the same thing. And then right there is the finished product. And you'll be able to see all the way along where I took these out. You can see the nails I cut off. You can see my freehand 45s. I've got everything all cleaned up and cleaned out so there's nothing in the way. This one is ready for a new piece of fascia now. All right, there's the big empty hole, and there's my initial piece right there. Yes, it's too long, obviously. What I do with these is I always buy a 2x8. For some reason, fascia sizes seem to be 
all over the map. Like they're not what you would expect. They're not all two by six. They're not all two by eight. In fact, they're rarely whatever the stock material is at Home Depot. So I just always buy two by eight. And then if I need to rip it down, I rip it down. There's the other side there. As you can see this time, this initial cut, I was too long. So what I did was I pulled this back down and I just went and shaved about a quarter inch off of it with a skill saw, set it at a 45. And then here is the finished piece sitting in place. It's not fully attached yet, but it's just sitting up there. By the way, I just got this. This is a DeWalt's new uh, battery-operated air compressor. Today was kind of a big test for it. I initially got it just so I could like air up tires or blow off some work surfaces because it's very tiny, compact, lightweight, and easy to take out. So today was the first day that I used this tiny air compressor that's battery operated with a big old framing nailer. And I wouldn't do this, would not ever use this air compressor for a job bigger than this if I need the framing nailer. Otherwise, I'd bring my bigger one that plugs in because I don't want to kill my batteries and I don't want to kill the air compressor. I highly, the price was pretty good, so I highly doubt that these are made super, super well, but it's very convenient, lightweight, and portable. So it works for a handyman who's on the go. Alright, so there's that piece of fascia again. I toenailed one little nail here, and I toenailed one little nail here. And that's not really for any structural support. That's just to keep it in place until I get the straps on it. Here's another picture. This is actually from the other side that I did where I didn't record everything. But here's a picture of me starting that freehand 45 there. What do we got here? Probably just more. Yep, more of that. Yeah, I just want to reiterate, that's that's how you get these out. All the nails that you need to access, you can access with one of those. You may have to pound it with a hammer a couple times to just make a little bit of room for the blade to get in. But that's how I do literally all of these. And then, as you can see here, I've got the straps in. I don't know why, from this angle, it looks like I barely got the strap on this board, but you'll see... A better picture of it here in a minute but I got my straps on that just keeps things from warping out away from the house or into the house yeah there you can see that straps on there just fine all right and here's the finished product right here so as you if you can see I think you probably can here's one edge here and here's one edge here everything else is nice and flush and smooth and painted and I did the exact same thing to the other side so, <clears throat> with all of that being done, I'll go ahead and tell you all about this other job I did on Saturday. Turned out to be not the hardest, like, as far as figuring out how this job wasn't hard at all. Oh, by the way, no, before we go, let's go over this job here one more time, the fascia. I forgot, I told you all we were going to do some numbers. So, I estimated this job at $980, and when it was all said and done, even though I bought a little extra material that I now have for me to keep, the material altogether, it was under 150, but I'm just going to call it 150. So 980 minus 150 would be 880, 830. So $830 is how much goes to labor in this. And I got this job done, both sides, by the way, in three hours and like 58. It was just a couple minutes shy of four hours. So altogether, this job came out to about 200 an hour. I didn't expect it to. These don't always go smoothly. This could have easily been an eight hour job, but had it been an eight hour job, which was the worst case scenario that I was writing my estimate for, had it been a full eight hour job, I still would have been getting my hundred bucks an hour basically. So the fact that it was 200 an hour is just a bonus. And I got home in time to sit down and put all this together and do a video for you. So those are the numbers on this was I made about 200 an hour for four hours. And like I said, could have been much less, very easily could have been much less. And that would have been fine as long as it was a hundred an hour. So the other day, um, oh, that's funny. I was over here pointing at stuff on the screen and I wasn't sharing the screen, but there was nothing you needed to see anyways. So this job I did that was insanely hard was actually, so you know, chain link fences, you got those little slats that you can slide down in them like vinyl slats to make it a privacy fence. I had one of those to do. I did myself a really huge favor and I assumed I didn't know anything about anything. 
So I doubled the time that I was going to put into it. But I'll tell you what ended up happening was this is a six foot fence and I'm five, six, right? So the top of the fence was above the top of my head. So all the work I was doing sliding the slats in was all up here, every single bit of it. So I spent a whole day like a horrible day. And when I say whole day, I don't mean eight hours, but I'm still it was... I want to say four and a half to five hours, and the only reason I stopped was because I ran out of materials. I don't know how I messed up my numbers, but I didn't order enough. I ended up doing about 60 feet of fence, and by the way, I did work the numbers if you're ever going to do these. Now keep in mind, again, this is a six-foot fence, and I'm 5'6", so I did have to reach up and do this. The fence was in decent shape, but I did notice any imperfections in the chain link in terms of getting bent or stretched or anything that's not like nice and perfect took twice the time because then I had to really go down and get my fingers in and work it all the way down and lock it into the channel at the bottom. So what I ended up doing was 12 feet an hour, and I'm not slow. I don't take breaks. I work hard the whole time, nice and hard and steady, and it took me an hour for every 12 feet that I did. So with that being said, that gives you some information to go off should you be doing these in the future. So look at the fence. If it's a really tight fence in really good shape, you could probably assume maybe 20 feet per hour on like a five foot fence where it's nice and comfortable and everything's tight and ready for you. And you could probably assume less than my, oh, I got sawdust all in my eyes. You could probably assume less than my 12 feet an hour if the fence is in bad shape. In fact, if the fence is in bad shape, I probably wouldn't take the job because the amount of time that it takes to fish those down through a fence that's in bad shape could, could easily turn this into a three-day job instead of a one-day job. But nonetheless, I ran out of materials, but I will tell you what, it was a rough job. Standing on my tippy toes with my hands above my head, doing this, and then going down to the ground and doing that, and then doing this, and then doing that all day long, and the fence was south-facing, the direction I needed to be facing to access it correctly, had the sun in my face the entire day, it was not a good day, had a pounding headache by the end, but I did get through it, now I gotta order more materials, and that was Saturday, and today's Monday, Sunday, I didn't do any work. Sunday, I just went ahead and took the day. Well, it's not really a day off. It's never a day off. But I took the day to just sort of clean out the van, catch up on admin work, and just knock out a whole lot of to-do things. Oh, and I also, on Sunday, yesterday, spent a lot of time researching um, insurance, like business insurance for your handyman business. I actually did find some really interesting pieces of information that I think are going to be very valid that I'm going to cover on a video for insurance that hopefully this week, but I'm going to do a real comprehensive video because I get a lot of questions about insurance that I can't answer. And I finally said, okay, well, if I'm the guy running the channel that's supposed to teach you how to do this, I should probably be able to answer the questions because the truth is with my insurance, when I first got started, I got a... Uh, I forget the name of the company, but I got like temporary insurance. It was for a month, right? I just paid for a month through whatever fly-by-night site. And then I paid for another month. But then somewhere within those first two months, I went ahead and got next insurance, for which there is a link in my description. It's who I use. But I didn't dive in super deep and do a lot of research. All I did was just say, okay, well, I need insurance, so let me go find some insurance. I saw a lot of people use Next who were in the construction trades, so I just went with what everybody else was doing. But now I actually put a day in yesterday, did tons of research. I think I've got some good info for y'all. I'll compile that all together on a real good video for y'all sometime this week. So... um yeah, I think that's about it. I mostly just wanted to show y'all this fascia job. I know y'all like on-the-job videos. You ask me for them all the time. So this one I think is a good one. And if you want, we'll go back through these pictures one more time. So, hold on. There is the finished product right there from here to here. That's the finished product. There's this one of the straps right there. You do need to use the straps. There's the other strap. There's both the straps. Lots of video of me cutting stuff. And like I said, these 45s are freehand. 
I really don't know of a better way to do this other than free handing those 45s. It does take some practice. You're going to suck at it at first, uh, but it's okay to suck at stuff at first as long as by the time you're done with that first one, even if it takes you a lot of extra time, as long as you've given them a good solid product, it's okay if you just kind of suck at it the first time. And then the second time it'll be a little better, and the second time it'll be a little better. Here's, you know, we'll give you more of an up-close view. See, there's a little gap in here, and that's okay. That all gets filled. I would prefer not to have a gap quite that big, but it is okay to have this. This is exterior, and it does get filled with... Make sure you use a good product. I'm not going to tell you what product to use, but make sure it's rated for exterior at the very least, and make sure it's not silicone-based because you're not going to be able to paint over anything silicone-based. There's that compressor. I like the compressor. I should have got like an affiliate link for it or something in case y'all want to click on it and go buy it, but I just don't have a lot of time for that. Yep, there it is. There it is. There's a big, beautiful, empty hole where it's about to go. This shows you the quality of those 45s. That is not bad for freehanding, guys. And as long as everything gets filled and painted correctly, this is going to look just fine, and it's going to last longer than the fascia to the either side of it, because that fascia is obviously older, so it's going to go out before my repair ever goes out. There's some more. Yep. So that's about it. Go back and show you the original, you know, what it looked like at first. That was the original junk right there. All right, so if y'all have any questions, let me know. Uh, don't forget to check the description. I've got a newsletter you can sign up for. I've got free documents that will help you run your business you can request. I've got a Jobber link. Oh, by the way, Jobber uh, is... So they ended their 50% off deal at the end of November, and I just saw today that they actually have a 40% off deal right now. So it's not the 50, but you're not going to see the 50 again probably until next you know, Black Friday, but 40 is still pretty significant. That's as close as you're going to get. So if y'all do want to use Jobber like I do, you can go click on the link in my description for that. Uh, next insurance is in the description. So yeah, and otherwise, if y'all have any questions, you know, first of all, comment on this video and I'll answer in the comments. If you have something a little more complex, bulletproofhandymanbusiness at gmail.com. And otherwise, I hope y'all are out there killing it, and I will see you next time.